Hello there. If the SNP leader, Humza Useless Yusuf, throws his toys out of his cot, then someone's doing something right. The First Minister of Scotland, Humza Useless Yusuf, threw a tantrum last night when his plot to upset Parliament didn't come off. It was his MPs in Westminster who tabled an amendment to the King's speech to try and force the government to call for an Israel-Hamas ceasefire. But it was easily rejected by 293 votes to 125, a majority of 168. 41 of those in favour being, of course, the Scottish Nationalist, sorry, National Party. With the rest coming from the usual suspects in Labour and the Lib Dems, like Diane Abbott, Jess Phillips and Ed Davey, all trying to portray their kind, caring and empathic approach to politics, while voting to give a proscribed terrorist organisation, Hamas, time and space to regroup, rearm and attack Israel again. Surely they've read the 2017 Hamas declaration, which talks about one Palestinian state under Islam, tolerating other religions, and that they will keep the conflict going until they achieve just that. Does that sound anything like this pie-in-the-sky, peaceful, two-state solution that people keep talking about? Now, I'm sure that the anti-Semitic politicians out there fully understand this, and that's the real reason they want a ceasefire. Humza Useless Yusuf said, I am beyond angry that Scottish Labour MPs and others refuse to back the calls for an immediate ceasefire. They are on the wrong side of history, which is unforgivable. Wrong side of history, eh? Well, we all know whose side you're on, Mr Yousaf, and your choice to take the wrong side. And welcoming people from Gaza to Scotland will cost you even more votes than all your other batshit insane policies put together. Oh, and tell me, how will male refugees from Gaza view some of your gender-based policies? The Egyptians don't want the people from Gaza. The Jordanians don't want the people from Gaza. In fact, not one nation in the Middle East has said it wants to take in any people from Gaza. I wonder why. And I wonder why you are so ready to open the doors to them. That is very telling and should be of great concern to everyone in Scotland. Now, this SNP vote did have one good outcome for the SNP. It split the Labour Party and ended up with 10 of Keir Starmer's shadow cabinet team resigning their positions because they voted for the SNP motion. Jess Phillips, Naz Shah, Afzal Khan, Yasmin Qureshi, Sarah Owen... Rachel Hopkins, Andy Slaughter, Paula Barker, Mary Foy and Dan Carden. But I expect they'll be given a period of reflection until the public forgets, then they'll be quietly called back in. And I wonder how many of these people will be out and about this weekend backing and speaking at Hamas backing protests. The Tories, on the other hand, all backed the government line. Now, Qatar is reportedly negotiating a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel, which would include the release of 50 of the some 200-plus Israeli hostages currently held by Hamas. And as it has come from Qatar, is it being quietly asked for by those Hamas leaders living in opulence there while their people suffer? Maybe Hamas is taking a hammering from the IDF and needs some breathing space. But this would not be a lasting ceasefire, oh no. According to Reuters, it would be days long, with increased humanitarian aid going into the Gaza Strip and requiring Israel to release some Palestinian women and children held in Israeli jails for either military activity or offences like throwing stones at troops, etc. But it would also allow Hamas to regroup and rearm when the Israelis need to maintain all the advantage they can get.
And while the ceasefire debate and vote was going on in Parliament, there was a large crowd of pro-Palestine protesters calling for a ceasefire assembling outside. A protest that Patrick Christie's of GB News went to take a deco at. He said the crowd was really ramped up and he called it a cauldron. And after a rather um, negative reaction from those assembled, the police told him to leave the area. But the crowd's racism and threatening behaviour was allowed to continue, Christie's said. Something that descended into more unacceptable behaviour when a splinter group went off to clamber all over the Royal Artillery Memorial at Hyde Park Corner. And once again the police stood aside, saying no crime had been broken. And Tory MP and Minister of State for Veterans Affairs, Johnny Mercer, said in an X, There is only one memorial of fallen soldiers in London. This is it. I will not stand idly by while individuals think this is the correct way to treat these memorials. Well, Sadiq Khan's Met Police say there is nothing you can do. This is the result of decades of politicians, lords and civil servants talking and doing the heritage and accomplishments of this country down. The result of opening our borders to try and look all tolerant and inclusive. All we're now doing is being forced by our own authorities to tolerate bad behaviour and in some cases calls of incitement to violence and violence itself. It has now become acceptable in the UK for people to openly not tolerate our way of life and heritage to the point of violence. In fact, this behaviour is encouraged by the poor response to it by the police and the courts. Were this a group of those deemed to be far right wing, you know, those that want to see our nation respect itself, the police would have dragged all sorts of laws and rules out of their toolbox to justify baton charges and the like, be in no doubt. Now, the Met did put out the following on X under the video that Mercer was talking about. We agree it is deeply disrespectful to climb on a war memorial. In the absence of a law against it, officers cannot automatically arrest, but they can intervene and make it clear the behaviour isn't acceptable. That's what they are seen doing here in this video. Although that activity could have led to a breach of the peace had the far right been there, couldn't it? But then the far right would have been arrested, wouldn't they? And I gather the Met had to dash to the Cenotaph to ensure it was safe too. In the end, a dispersal order was put in place in parts of the Westminster area from 10 to 8 until 2am this morning. It's a pity that the private members' bill called Desecration of War Memorials Bill, brought forward by Tory MP Jonathan Gullis, wasn't made law. It only got a first reading and was then withdrawn. However, the Met did manage to arrest eight Greenpeace members for climbing over our monuments in 2016. Oh, and don't you ever think of adorning anything with a Union Jack or the flag of St George. Now that would bring a storm down on you.